Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. It has been a very long time since I've last recorded. Um, it's Today is November 22nd, uh, 2011, and I think the last time I put up an episode was in the end at the end of September. So I apologize, I'm very sorry about the long delay in recording. Um, I was traveling a lot the last couple months and that really messes up my ability to, to do these videos. So I'm back in the game now though and uh, hope to hope to have them come out more regularly from here on out. So when we left off I was working on uh, trying to get the dialogue, a dialogue tested and it's been so long since I've worked on this code and I haven't looked at it at all uh, up until today um, that I don't remember the details but we'll figure it out when we get back into it. Um, and But I do remember that we were having a really hard time getting the test to work because the dialogue wasn't showing up and it wasn't showing up and it wasn't showing up and I assumed it was a problem with the tests. But Esco Luantula, uh, and I'm sure I'm butchering your name Esco so I apologize about that, um, he suggested that there was some sort of problem with the way Eclipse is running the test. So I looked into that a little bit further and it turned out to be true. The problem was I had swt.jar as a referenced library um, and that was causing some sort of problem that was preventing the application from working properly. Uh, once I took that out, I could actually run the application properly um, from Eclipse, not just from the command line as I've had to do it up until now. So uh, that's really nice to have resolved. Uh, I'm probably going to keep running it from the command line just because it's convenient. But um, the other thing this did is it made the test work. So if I run the test now, you'll see, oops, I've got a it automatically does whatever I did last. Um, so if I run the test now on everything, uh, you'll actually see frames come up and the dialogue show up. And what's interesting to me is um, it is hanging. So I have to cancel the dialogue, then I get the pause. So I'm going to have to open that up on another thread. And well, uh, now we get to get back into it. So let me put this aside and put that away. And don't need that. So where, <laughs> where the heck were we? Um, I don't think I need that. Pretty sure I was working in application frame test. Yeah, so let's just close everything else down. We've got application frame test here. And down here we're doing our stuff. Save as menu item should show the save dialog. Right. So if we run this manually, we see there's our our application. Here's our file dialog. Here's our save as menu item. And we want that to show the um, the save dialog. Okay, so we can do that. Um, so now that we've got this showing up, we're saying invoke and wait. What if we say invoke later? That's the asynchronous version of the same command, which I'm hoping will cause that dialog to show up. And then disappear after a count of five. Well, that's promising. We're failing right away. Um, let's just sleep for a, okay, so let's, let's, um, now let's close the dialog. Now what I want to get to is the point where we can open the dialog, do some stuff to it, and then close it. Um, not exactly sure how this is going to work out, but we're definitely making good progress here, and that makes me happy. So... I'm going to sleep for another few seconds. Um, so I guess I don't need to sleep. I want to sleep after I've closed. So. Closed, waiting 
two seconds. And here, what am I going to do? I've got a dialog which um, I need to pull out into a variable. And in fact, I think I can probably just pull the whole thing out. Because setting it visible is the part that's tricky. Um, and then I should be able to say dialog dot close. I don't know. Wait for Eclipse's IntelliSense to catch up. Code completion, whatever it's called. IntelliSense, I think, is a Microsoft trademark. Okay, so um, uh, can't call close. Is it just set visible? This is still pretty, I mean, this is a very, very tough little thing. I mean, we've got, a ha we've got this modal dialogue coming up um, and being able to, being able to manipulate it as a modal dialogue, I, I still don't have a lot of faith that we can get that done. Um, I'm gonna try for the rest of this episode, I think if we can't get it done by the end of this episode though, I'm going to call it a day, and as I mentioned in the last episode, there's there's good reasons not to worry about it. Okay, so there's that, counting down, didn't close. Interestingly, though, it did get wiped out. What happens, did that just happen when we... Did that happen when the application exited? Or did it happen because the frame was disposed? What happens if we do that? Frame dispose. No, it's still not closing it. Um, hmm. This is a tough one. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to go out on the web and search a little bit. Um, if I can't find anything useful, I think we'll call it a day. So, back in a few. Okay, I'm back. I didn't really find what I was looking for, but um, I've, I have the ability to set the dialog as a modeless dialog, in which case it doesn't block the thread. But this invoke later is also asynchronous and seems to work. Uh, once again, I'm mucking around with parts of Swing I don't really understand. Uh, what I wasn't able to do was get it to dispose itself like I wanted to. If I put a sleep back in here, um, you can see that it's not disposing itself. Um, we're sleeping and then or it displays itself, let's do that again, displays, it's supposed to have disposed, but it doesn't. I don't know what's going on there, and it looks to me like, in fact, it, it really looks like the frame isn't being set invisible either. Oops, I'll have to cancel that. Um, so, let me try that. Yeah, that's the frame should have been set invisible at this point, and it's not. Um, on the other hand, I'm only seeing one of them. So, oh, there's another one. Some of them are getting right, disappearing. Some aren't. I wonder if that's because we're not doing a swing utilities dot invoke and wait um, on that. Uh, 
Uh, oh, I always get that wrong. How is that supposed to work? So, yeah, it's not, it's not disposing of the frame. And I don't know what to do about that. That seems odd. And yet, more aren't showing up, but I think maybe that's just because most of my test methods don't actually cause things to show up. So I find that kind of disturbing, but at the same time, everything's working, and I'm so tired of working with Swing. I'm sure this is going to bite me at some point in the future, but i um, not really sure what to do about it. So I think I'll just leave this as here, as is, um, with a note. This doesn't appear to, to do anything. So I don't know if it's because I'm not calling, I'm not running all my swing tests on the event thread like I'm supposed to, or something else. Um, I'm sure that whatever's going on here is going to come back and bite me in the butt in some point in the future, but uh, it doesn't affect the actual running of the application, and I have no idea where to begin, so I'm just going to let it go. Uh, other than that, we do have the ability to actually create the frame. And um, I wonder if we even need to, or create the dialogue. And it cleans up after itself when the test finished running, which is kind of cheesy, but you know, at least there's that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this in as a sort of a finally, just because that's what I sh the way it's supposed to work, but um, Obviously, it's not working that way. The reason this is finally, by the way, is so that if a test fails, the this line of code still runs. Okay, so um, we've got the dialog showing up. We've got it running asynchronously, which is great, which means that we should be able to test that it's doing something. And that's what I want to do next. Um, I'm going to do something here that's, this is still sort of spike or experimental code. I'm not actually running in production code yet. Um, but what I'm going to do is write sort of the production code here in the test and the test code simultaneously. And the reason for that is that I'm just trying to figure out how all this works and it's easier to have it in all in one place. So what I want to do here is do something that may give me a race condition, which is that I want to assert that the dialog uh, is visible. And the reason for that, and I expect this to fail sometimes, um, the reason I'm testing to see if it's visible is that I'm going to run assertions on, on the fact that the dialog shows up. So, um, hmm, yeah, I'm not, not exactly sure how to deal with that. Let's just run this and see what happens. Okay. So there's our failure. It didn't. It's not visible. Yep, still not visible. Still not visible. But if we add a sleep, I think it will show up as visible. Yeah, yeah. So we definitely have a race condition there. So what we need to do next is figure out exactly what we're testing and have some programmatic controls in there to eliminate the race condition. And sleeping is not the right way to do it. It's really slow, so it slows our test down, and it's not reliable um, because the race condition is still there. It's just been given a handicap. 
So anyway, that's our time for this episode. Thanks very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.